Welcome to another episode of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah and this is a podcast all about crochet, a little bit of knitting, sometimes sewing, and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. Welcome. If you are a new viewer, I'm so happy you have stopped by. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. I have many, many things to talk about with you today. If you're looking for me anywhere on the interweb, of course you can find me as The Cozy Cottage Crochet on Instagram. That is where I'm most active, especially in my Instagram stories. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, inquiries, comments, anything to do with the podcast specifically, please do shoot me an email. My email address is thecozycottagecrochet at gmail.com. <coughs> I feel like I have a frog in my throat <clears throat> and I don't understand what happened. I actually slept in this morning. I, I don't sleep in. I know that like sleeping in may be a thing that some of you guys can do. I no longer have that skill since I have been working in the corporate world for a long time. <laughs> uh, so if left to my own devices, I would probably go to bed at 10 and wake up around 7 every day. But today, my husband got up around 7, but I had today off. Well, technically I don't have today off because I have to work tonight. <laughs> but I didn't have to be at work this morning. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to just roll over and go back to sleep. And then I did until 9.30. That's a big deal. So now it's like 11.30 and I'm just starting to record this podcast and normally I would be like already uploading it by now. <laughs> so we're going to see how this goes. I'm drinking one of these fancy things that I got at my local grocery store. <clears throat> Hopefully that will keep the frog in my throat away and I'll be able to talk to you. Let's see. Where should we start? I don't even know. There's so much to talk about. First of all, we have some make-alongs going. One of them is almost coming to a close. That is the end of the whip hashtag the end of the whip sung to the tune of rem's the end of the world and we know it it's the end of the whip and we know it and i feel fine you're welcome so the only rule for that make along you can do any craft um the only rule is that you just have to focus on finishing and there are tons and tons of finished objects in the thread already i do have prizes i just haven't had a chance to sit down and do any prize packages i know it's the end of july right now almost we're like five days from the end of july but I think I'm gonna extend the deadline <laughs> because I am not prepared. So because I am unprepared, you guys get more time. So let's extend it until August 15th, especially because I will be out of town next week and I am definitely not going to have time to pull any prizes <laughs> or make any prize packages. So on the next podcast episode, I will have prizes ready to show you for that make along. And we will go until August 15th and then I will close the finished object thread and then draw winners after that. So you get an extra two weeks. <laughs> So if you are still working on finishing, you still have time. That was a Logan quote. Logan, the Marvel movie. <laughs> if you didn't know what this from, he's like, the preview, which I will never forget because I've watched it a billion times because it was before every movie ever that year. There's one part where he's like, Logan, you still have time. The worst. The movie was great, but ugh, I hate that I know that. So that's the first make along. Second make along is the year of the sock 2019. Hashtag year of the sock 2019. I will put that below so you can see that is just an informal make along for the entire year of 2019 to make socks. You can crochet socks, you can knit socks. I don't know if there's any other way you can make socks. Can you sew socks? I don't know. <laughs> but if you can, you're welcome to try. Um, I just drew the second quarter prize for that and the fourth. So we have the third quarter prize, which will be coming up in September. And then we will have a grand prize at the end, which I'm very excited about. And I actually have some progress on that sock make-along to show you as well in this episode. So those are the two make-alongs. I did want to give you an update because I know some of you were interested. When I did the sample sale, I sold some of the things that I've made and no longer wear so that I could raise money to service my sewing machine. <laughs> so I actually did drop off my sewing machine um, the day after my last episode aired. So that was two weeks ago. I dropped off my machine. I have a Faf Hobby... 1142 I think is the number so it's a really good little machine but of course I got it used um, and when I got it I had to replace the pedal immediately because it only had one speed like something was broken in there <laughs> so um, and it's making a very strange noise so I went and got I dropped that one off and I also dropped my mom's sewing machine off which is a Sears Kenmore sewing machine it's probably older it's definitely older than I am I think it belonged to my granny before it belonged to my mom is that right or is that your sewing machine or was that my auntie niece's sewing machine I don't know <laughs> it was somebody's sewing machine before it was my mom's sewing machine and now it's my now I have it um and so I bought a desk cover for it and I just took it to get a service and it turns out that what it's going to cost is exactly the amount of money that you guys sent me for the samples that I sold so a huge thank you to that because that is a just a wonderful thing 
for me to be able to do. The guy who is going to service them has been doing it since like the 80s. And he has a, like a, you have to wait like a month because he's so backed up because there's only two people that I know of in St. Pete that service sewing machines. And he had amazing reviews. I think the turnaround time on the other person was faster, but this guy, like nobody had anything bad to say about him at all <laughs> on the online. And he was really, really nice when I went and dropped it off. So I should have those back by the middle of August, I think. And then we'll get on to sewing. I actually have some mending to do. I have several t-shirts that have holes. Like one has a hole under the arm, one has a hole on the neckband. And then my husband has a t-shirt that has a hole in the side where he cut the tag off <laughs> and snipped the threads. So I definitely need to do some mending and finish some projects that I started in Stitchcation and do some bags. So I am excited to get to sewing once that comes back. But a huge thank you to everyone who participated in that because it was exactly the right amount to get both sewing machines serviced and I am thrilled. Also, <laughs> I just have to say thank you to everyone who commented on the last episode. Um, for, for some reason, I have like a ton of new subscribers all of a sudden. Um, I don't know, like where are you coming from? <laughs> I am so thrilled that you're here. Thank you for subscribing. That really means the world to me. Um, but was it the last episode that made you subscribe or were you, was somebody sending you from somewhere? Like I would love to know where you heard about this podcast. So if you would comment down below, that would just make my day. Um, but to everyone else who commented, you guys, I haven't been able to respond to every comment yet. Um, I will do that because you just give me all the feels, all the nice feels I am so happy and so thrilled to be with you every two weeks it's just a wonderful thing and uh, we're not gonna get emotional at the beginning of the podcast episode but thank you for watching thank you for listening thank you for participating I really value your contributions in the comments and an extra special gigantic humongous blown away thank you to everyone who has decided to become a member of my patreon community uh, there are 21 members so far of my patreon community which there's a link below if you would like to join that um, I, I don't know what I was expecting. I, maybe I was thinking like, I don't know, maybe like five or 10 people, but 21 people, that's so exciting to me. And I have a giveaway winner to announce. So this beautiful, beautiful skein of Attic Spin Dye Yarn, that is a hand dyed yarn company in the UK um, and run by Andy and Angela, who are just the sweetest people. And they sent this to me to use as a giveaway a while back. It comes with some beautiful tea and a little lavender sachet and some stitch markers. And this is the colorway, Quoth the Raven. And you can see it is so pretty. So this is a giveaway. I drew just randomly someone out of the list of 21 people who have subscribed. And I, <laughs> was so thrilled when I pulled the name. So Karen, oh no, you are the winner of this skein. And I, you're in Hawaii, right? I'm so excited that this yarn from the UK made its way to Florida and is now going to Hawaii. Um, she, I'm just, hopefully this doesn't make you uncomfortable, Karen, but you, she has been such a supporter of this podcast for a long, long time. She has test crocheted some of my patterns. She is just a beautiful person. Her Instagram handle is Musical Bunny. Does that have a number? Oh gosh, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I am just so thankful for you and I'm so thrilled to be able to send this to you and just give it back, be able to give back a tiny fraction of what you have given me with your support. So I will send you a message on Patreon if you could send me your address. I feel like maybe I had your address at one point, but who knows what happened to it? I don't know. And I will leave a link below to the Attic Spin Dye Yarn Company on Etsy. You should definitely go check their yarn out their prices are extremely reasonable <laughs> for hand dyed yarn and especially if you're in the UK and you don't have to worry about paying a lot of shipping like all over the world you should definitely check them out they make beautiful beautiful stuff <sighs> are you ready to talk about it's not like we haven't been talking about yarn I don't know what I'm saying I was gonna say are you ready to talk about yarn we've already been talking about yarn but let's talk about actual crochet and knitting I have a finished object which technically is a finished object for me, but I didn't make the bulk of this item. <laughs> so I have a friend who knit a cowl, I don't know, like a year ago probably, maybe two years ago, and she didn't know how to bind off. And so she asked me if I could possibly bind it off for her. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I have no idea what this yarn is. This is how much is left. It's some kind of bulky, I don't know, it, it almost looks like, I can't remember what the name of this, that you get at like Joann's Homespun maybe? 
No, it's not homespun. It's something. Woolies. It does, it smells ever so slightly sheepy, but I think it's probably got a lot of acrylic in it because it did lay flat when I steam blocked it. She gave me, it was on the needles still. I have no idea what size needles these are. <laughs> They're plastic. The cable is actually pretty nice. But I don't, who knows what size needle this is. This is the cowl. <laughs> so she had done, she had done the cast on, which is this edge here. And she had worked all the way up to probably about here. She still had, she was just like, I don't know how to bind off exactly. And <laughs> she still had so much yarn left. So I did about four more rows, which took maybe 20 minutes because bulky yarn. And this is not a big cowl. And then I did the bind off. And of course it was curling all over the place because that's what happens <laughs> when you do stockinette. So I steam blocked it like steam blocked the heck out of it and then I saw her the next day and I promptly forgot to give it to her so now I can show it on the podcast <laughs> so it's just a plain cowl kind of goes around like this it showing up really really dark on camera but that's pretty true to color it's really beautiful and I was like oh my gosh I can't believe I forgot to give you your cowl I had it in my car to give you I told you to remind me and she's like well I don't need it right now because it's Florida and it's like a thousand degrees Actually, I'm not gonna complain about the heat fuzz because I know some of you are in the UK and other places where it's like, what, 35 degrees? What is that, 100 degrees Fahrenheit-ish and you don't have air conditioning? So it's actually only like 80s. It's been in the 80s this week here because it has been raining nonstop. So the sun is currently out. It did not make an appearance all day yesterday. It rained and it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. <laughs> We were actually going to go kayaking tomorrow. And by kayaking, I mean we were going to get a tandem kayak. And my husband was going to do all the work because I cannot be trusted with a paddle. Last time I had one, I like kept running him into trees. And that's not a recipe for a good marriage, is it? To run your husband into trees constantly on the riverbank. So he's going to do all the paddling. However, it's supposed to storm, like a thunderstorm, all day tomorrow. So now it got rescheduled. <laughs> so now we're going to the movies instead. Oh, darn. <laughs> I love rainy days and going to the movies. How would we even get on talking about this? If you can follow my train of thought this episode, you deserve a gold star. This is done. It is my finished object and I thought it was so, so perfect for the end of the whip because this is a whip that has been hanging around for a year or two just because she didn't know how to bind off. So I'm really, really excited to be able to give this to her next time I see her in a couple of weeks. And plus I got a finished object and it, thankfully, because otherwise I would not have a finished object to show you. I have not done as much crochet and knitting as I thought that I, as I feel that I should have done. I have done some, I have a lot of different things to show you. Oh my gosh, I'm still getting on. <laughs> Let's go on another tangent, shall we? What am I wearing? This is the first time I've worn crochet in a while. First of all, because it's been so dang hot and it's not today. It's a nice, it's a nice in the 80s. What temperature? I don't know. But this is a pattern of my own design, actually. Um, it is the second, second pattern that I ever released. Oh, that's upside down. It is called the Key Largo Lace Wrap. And it has this little flower lace pattern. Now this is made in a lace weight, a light fingering to late with lace weight yarn. This is 100% bamboo, so it's perfect for Florida. Um, and it was my second design and it was yarn from Kristen Omdahl, who is a Florida designer. And it, this yarn was sent to me by a beautiful supporter of this podcast named Barb, who supported me like from the very beginning. And so she sent me this yarn and I made a design out of it and it was the best thing ever. So <laughs> it's lace. You can also make it in fingering weight yarn. I suppose you could make it in any weight of yarn that you want, as long as you do a swatch, you just wouldn't want to make it as wide. So I tend to wear this sometimes when we go to the beach. So like right now I'm wearing it as a scarf. It's super long, but I will also wear it like this if we're at the beach or something like that, or I'm wearing like a little sundress, just kind of wear it over my shoulders like a wrap. Um, and if it's really windy, I'll just do that. So fancy, right? Yes, fancy is my middle name. That's not true. If there's anybody who's not fancy, it's me. <laughs> so that's what I'm wearing. It's one of my own patterns. I am a crochet designer. Ooh, should we talk about, let's talk about designs before we talk about the other works in progress that I have because I have some very exciting news. No, a pattern is not ready for release. Calm down. 
you've been watching for a while, you will remember this bag. This is a sheepy bag that I made out of a tea towel that I got in Ireland when we were there last year. Living in this bag is my first ever Tunisian crochet project. It is the Tunisian Zen Cowl, made out of yarn from the Life in the Long Grass Studio, which is, oh, I cannot get over this yarn. So this cowl has been done for like a month and it has been tested, but I did not, I just didn't have the brain space to make the final edits of this pattern. And so finally, for some reason, like two days ago, I sat down and I just did it. I had the energy, I had the brain space, and so I did it. And then I found a tech editor in the United States who is experienced with Tunisian crochet. Um, Cause all of the tech editors I have worked with so far, I don't know that they do Tunisian crochet. So, and I need someone who's really experienced because this is my first Tunisian pattern. I'm sure there's gonna be some stuff. So it has been tested by a bunch of people, but still, <laughs> I'm still sure she's gonna find all kinds of things. So I'm just so excited. Um, she has me booked for the first week in August to do this. So I don't know if this will be out by the next time I podcast, which is in two weeks or not, but definitely by the episode after that. And so it just depends on how many edits I have to make, but I'm so thrilled, you guys. I feel like I usually never empty my project bag that my design is in until I hit the publish button on Ravelry and then I put it away for real because I still have my notebook in here that has all my notes. I have the yarn just in case. You never know, right? I don't want to go digging in my stash. So I, to think that I'm about to reach the end of this where I can unload this project bag and use it for something else special and to just be able to get this Tunisian project out in the world is so exciting to me. So excited. And it just feels really, really good to make a little bit of progress. <laughs> I am trying to be kind to myself. It's been, as you all know, if you've been around, it's been quite a year, mental health wise and, and actual health wise and work wise. And it's just been a roller coaster, sometimes a roller coaster during a single day. Um, but it feels really, really good to make some progress. And speaking of progress, what was living in this bag, it says I'll pack in my bag customary shot of the alpaca butt is the nihilist cowl and it's still not seamed <laughs> so it's it still can't count as a finished object but i did take all of the measurements and i wrote up the entire pattern yesterday so the only thing i have to do for this cowl still is seam it weave in the ends and then i need to just figure out the how much yardage i used so this is a one skein project i realize i didn't really show show this to you so it is this is not once it's seamed it's just gonna kind of be a bandana style cowl and I made it to kind of look like knitted lace eyelets. It's a really, really simple pattern and you can actually adjust this in any size you want just by working less or more repeats of this increase pattern before you start to work flat so you can seam. So I just need to figure out how much yardage I used. I believe this is a Malibri Malabrigo single ply in the colorway Lynx and I still have some left I have this much left. So that is pretty good. I would say this is maybe 10 grams, maybe. That's pretty darn good for using up that special single skein. <laughs> so I wrote up the whole pattern. So all I have to do is figure out the yardage and take pictures. And then I will be able to send that out to testers as well. I will be gone, as I said, all next week. So it's unlikely that it will happen <laughs> before the next episode, but maybe it feels really, really good to make some progress. And wait i have one more this is my crochet project that i've been exclusively working on i've tried to be really monogamous on my crochet specifically for the end of the whip so that i can get some of these things accomplished that are in my whip overflowing whip basket and so that i can start new things i have so many new things i'm gonna start you guys so i have finished the crochet on another design now it is not blocked and i haven't seen it either and i haven't even started writing up the pattern but it's living in this cute, cute, cute dodgy bag that Ellie from Little Drops of Wonderful sent me, which I love this bag so much. And it has, of course, her pin that says, you are a little drop of wonderful and the dodgy bag make along button. I can't make any dodgy bags for the dodgy bag make along, which I'm pretty sure is over now, but I couldn't make any because my sewing machine <laughs> has a fail, needed to be serviced. But the yarn that I am using is this amazing lace weight 100% silk single ply yarn from Fat Bunny Yarn. Hi, Maria. 
Pet Bunny Yarn is run by the lovely Maria, who is a friend of mine, and um, she lives in Clearwater, so it's like super local yarn to me. This is the tag, it's the colorway called Dahlia, and like I said, it's 100% silk. It's 50 gram balls, so I had two 50 gram balls, but you get 300 yards in each ball because, of course, it's lace weight. So I finished the crochet entirely. Here we go. And I originally was gonna work, so I've worked four repeats. There's a lace pattern that I work four repeats of. I was originally gonna work five, but of course this isn't blocked and it's already pretty wide. So once it's blocked, which I am gonna try to do today or tomorrow, it's gonna just bloom so beautifully. Like this is what it looks like now, but blocked, it's gonna just really, really spread. And it's got this amazing little textural detail right here. And of course this takes a while <laughs> to crochet because it's lace weight. This is where I was last time you saw. So I had one entire panel to do and then I fastened off. And so this you work flat and then seam so that it will be just like, <laughs> just like this. I kind of like loose cowls. You could totally make this out of like a bulky weight yarn when you could make this really snug if you wanted to. I will include modification instructions in the pattern once I get around to writing it up um, to show, to just give you the, the repeat, the stitch count, so that you can make this in any width that you want. So it will be really, really easy. I would say that this was an intermediate pattern, so it uses a lot of different stitches. They're all relatively simple stitches, but there's some parts where we work in the third loop, there's extended stitches, there is treble stitches, so not there's a single crochet, a double crochet, and then a treble crochet in US terms. So in UK terms, that would be a double treble. <laughs> so, and it uses a foundation stitch, and I think it's fairly easy. Once you get the hang of it, um, the, the pattern re repeats. I would say after the second repeat, I didn't even look at my notes for the pattern. I just knew from memory. I just love this yarn so much and I love how it gradiates so the first ball had a little more white in it but at towards the end of the ball it was getting pink and which you can see here and this is where I joined the second ball and then it gets really really pink and purple so I I love it so much this is the Vanya cowl that is named after Vanya Hargreaves from the Umbrella Academy who is a very complicated character um I can't wait for season two of the Umbrella Academy but basically her character is She's, a, she's like the most powerful one out of all the children in this show, but she's also the most fragile. So she's kind of unpredictable, but she's very, very powerful and very fragile, and it's this contrast. And that is what this yarn is to me. Not only is it beautiful and delicate, but it's, it's a single ply. Very, I mean, a lace weight single ply is pretty fragile, but it's made out of 100% silk. So I am yanking on this and nothing's happening. So there was, no play, there was no point when I was working on this where the yarn broke at all. I didn't find any knots, I didn't find anything like that. So I just thought it was perfect. <laughs> a perfect illustration of kind of her life and a tribute to her and to a show that I really, really like. Y'all know that I really like nerd crochet, okay? So it's not technically a finished object, but the crochet is finished and I am so thrilled. I hope <laughs> to get that pattern written up soon, but you know, that I have been trying to be a little kinder to myself and not focus on production, but instead focus on the joy of making at the moment. So if for some reason it takes me a month to get that pattern written up, then so be it, it will be fine. Plus y'all can make the Tunisian crochet pattern in the meantime. <laughs> That'll be out soon. Okay, Those, that was a whole design segment that are all three in various stages of works in progress because to me a design is still a work in progress until it is officially released. I have worked on some other stuff though. Let's talk socks, shall we? Socks, yay! Okay, so the first sock, I started two new pairs since the last time you saw me. This is the one that has been living in my backpack that I take to work with me. So sometimes I'm in meetings or stuff like that and it's just nice to have a sock to work on. So I am using Nipix Stroll in the colorway Duchess Heather. It's this purpley color that I had in my stash for the heels, toes, and cuffs. And I am using Hobie Yarn Happy Feet in the colorway 2D Foodie. It's actually 2D Foodie 
with no R. I think last time I said tutti frutti. Apparently that's incorrect. That doesn't exist. So I had a 50 gram ball of this. Now Hobie Yarn sent me some yarn to review and use. So this is the second pair of socks that I will have made with their yarn. And I paired it with the Knit Pick Stroll because Knit Pick Stroll is basically Knit Pick's Felici, just not self-striping. So I really wanted to compare these two and see because they seem to be the same price point and they seem to be the same kind of yarn to me. So I have actually finished the sock tube. It has no heel. You know why? Because I'm gonna do an afterthought heel. My first afterthought heel ever. <laughs> um, I was finally inspired to do this by watching Denise of the Earth Tones Girl podcast. <clears throat> she had a video on how to do afterthought heels and like don't be scared of them. And she has a no fear sock cal running, which I need in my life. So what I did is I cast on my customary 64 stitches. I did it on a 2.25 millimeter nine inch circular. I did 15 rounds of two by two rib. Then I did one round of plain stockinette in the purple. And then I switched to the Hobie yarn. And it just does makes these amazing stripes. These little markers are for my afterthought heel. And it makes these amazing stripes. And then I joined the Knit Pick Stroll back and I just did a wedge toe. And then I did a Kitchener stitch, which I'm not gonna say I love Kitchenering. I got this thing at my local yarn store, which is Stash, that tells you how to do the Kitchener stitch because I can never remember how to do it. <clears throat> I don't know how I feel about the wedge toe. It's so much more wedgy than my toe up wedge toe. So I don't know. Does anyone know of like a, a, a good toe that's like this? I like a wedge toe, but this is like really severe. And I definitely Kitchenered too tightly because it like, see how it goes in right there? <laughs> you shouldn't yank on your yarn when you're doing the Kitchener stitch because it's supposed to be just another row of knitting and not a seam, but it will be fine. I honestly cannot say enough good things about this yarn. It flew off my needles, and I don't know why that is. I'm just gonna put this right here so you can admire the beauty of the stripes. Because I have knit 13 pairs of socks this year, and not a single pair has the yarn flown off my needles like this. I don't know what it is about this yarn, but it just glides like I don't even know a word to describe how well it glides off my needles. It was flying, zooming, in fact. So I don't know, I don't know, because it feels pretty similar to Felici with me, for me. And Felici flies off my needles too, but this Hobie yarn was even better. I loved every stitch of working on this. Um, I did not find, I have not found any knots so far. And the stripes, I haven't found any spots where it was dyed incorrectly, or I, I really love it. I think, I do think it's gonna fuzz up pretty severely like Felici does, but that's why I paired them together. So I I am gonna highly recommend this yarn. Now, of course, I haven't washed it yet, so I don't really know, but I'm assuming it's gonna behave like Felici and fuzz up quite a bit. I'm okay with that because it's incredibly soft. So I don't know if, I think you should buy this. I am, I would, I think I have one more ball of Happy Feet that they sent me and then a couple other balls of different kinds. And I'm like already trying to talk myself out of not casting on the other ball immediately <laughs> after these are finished because I love working with it so much. Like I will be sad when these socks are over. So I have to do the heel on this one, but I did start just this week. I did the cast on in the cuff of the second one and I got through one and like a half stripes. So it should be pretty perfect when it's done. Provided I can do the afterthought heel, which will be fine. It will be fine. No fear. That's sock number one. My first afterthought heel ever. Sock number two was this yarn was sent to me by Brigitta. We did a yarn swap. She lives in Slovenia. So this yarn, oh, there's fuzz attached and yarn ends. <laughs> I should clean up my project bags more often. This yarn is a yarn that you can only get in Slovenia that she sent me, and so I'm using it for the contrast toes, heels, and cuffs, and I actually have 100 grams of it, and it feels very hard-wearing. Like, it's kind of like a rustic yarn. It's not itchy, but it definitely feels more hard-wearing. And this yarn that I'm using to make the actual sock with is Lana, Lana Grossa something? Let's see. It's an 80% wool, 20% nylon confetti, Lana Grossa confetti yarn. So I thought, when you look at this in the ball, it does not look at all like what it's coming up as. 
So I'm doing a fish, I did a fish lips kiss heel on this. So I started this also cuff down. I know, who am I? It's a whole new world. Same thing, 64 stitches, two by two rib. Then I switched to stockinette. I did my fish lips kiss heel and now I'm working on the foot. I, it's supposed to be like a self patterning yarn, which it kind of is, but my tension, as you can see, is a little too tight, I think, to properly work with this yarn. So there it looks, it's kind of a little all over the place. This part I love, this purpley pink part. I am a little confused by the colors <laughs> that are put together. Like, I'm not sure why it goes from like a muted orange into pink. I don't know. Um, I don't hate it. <laughs> I just would never have put those colors together. So I'm interested to see how it works up. I don't know. I'm hoping the way the colors run in here, it's kind of a long color repeat. I'm hoping I'll be able to make the socks match and still have enough yarn to do that. I should be able to because I'm making shorty socks, but we'll see. I don't know. So yeah, what a weird yarn, but I like working with it. And it's fun, it's kind of a fun adventure to see how things work up even when you don't have a clue how they're gonna work up. It's like a choose your own adventure yarn game. Except you're not. The only adventure you choose is the yarn to begin with. <laughs> so. <sighs> drink break. Those are my two socks. Um, I have one more knitting project to show you and I have a Tunisian crochet project. So let's um, quickly talk about the knitting project because this will be living with us for months and months and months to come, I'm sure. It is my transition shawl, which is a pattern by Hand Knit by Cam. I am using Webb's Valley Yarn Charlemont, and there is a dark gray, a light gray, a dark green and a light green. And I am making this pattern because I need to practice my purling, <laughs> which I am honestly getting way better at. It is almost, it's already to the point where I'm not gonna be able to show you it all stretched out. So it is kind of a half, it's like a half hexy shawl. And it takes me forever, legitimately forever to do a row. I am up to how many stitches? Let's find out. I am up to almost 320 stitches per row. It's gonna get up to almost 600, so it's only just gonna keep going slower and slower and slower and slower. <laughs> but it's beautiful. This is where I was last time. So I have done, finished the gray band and done this solid green band. I still have like four or five rows of the green to do before the next striping pattern starts. And I'm not sure how many stri more striping patterns there are. Either one, <clears throat> one or two, I think maybe one, and then, um, a border, but I'm not sure. So it doesn't look like much project progress, but seriously, that took so much time. I really don't mind knitting, but uh, it takes so long. You guys crochet is so fast, so fast. The only part of knitting that I truly love is going around in a circle in stockinette. That's what I like. The purling still is just like, uh, it just irritates me after a while. Whatever, I'm working on it. So the other project that I have been working on is a sleeve for a cardigan. It is the Soft Gray Cardigan by Kat Golden. I got it out of the Simply Crochet Magazine Some Issue. It's linked on my project page in Ravelry. Sorry, I just had a sneezing attack. <laughs> Hopefully I cut that out and you didn't have to hear it. I am using a 4, 4.5, 5 millimeter Denise Tunisian Crochet Hook. I love, 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 love these hooks. You know that if you have watched me talk about this before. I so love these hooks. They just glide with the yarn so perfectly. So the yarn that I'm using is the Luet Gems 100% Merino. It's colorway eggplant. I got this yarn for myself for my birthday last year. So almost, let's see, a year and three months ago, I think. So I am making, I have one sleeve finished 
And so since the last time you saw it, it doesn't really look like much progress, but of course it's taking a little bit longer now. This is where I was. I did had one more increase section to do. So I did that and then all of this working flat. I still probably have about this much to work flat. I am almost done with this ball of yarn and I only have four of them left. I had seven originally. So two sleeves are going to take three and a half balls of yarn. Oof, I'm gonna need so much more for the body. Luckily, this is a kind of a commercially produced yarn. So I'm not super worried about the dye lots, um, but I, do, I honestly don't know how much I'm gonna need. I may just work, you work bottom up. So I may just, I'll probably have three balls left. I'll see how far I can get on the body of this sweater with that and then order. I'm probably gonna, I think I'm gonna need at least two more maybe three and this yarn's like 15 bucks a thing so that's kind of a lot that's that's a lot of money if this wasn't my birthday yarn i would not have bought it <laughs> but i had some birthday money so it wasn't like breaking my bank but i thought i could get a whole sweater out of it i i, I don't think i could get a whole sweater out of it just regular crochet maybe short sleeved i would still need some more because the yardage on each ball is not significant it's a little bit less than you would get on a normal worsted weight ball of yarn so I'm probably gonna need to buy three more of those. It's fine. It will be worth it because the color is so beautiful. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I've already started saving my pennies for when I have to buy that yarn. Let's talk. I have two exciting things to talk about. Maker plans. One of which we've already talked about and I have actually swatched and I have the swatch to show you. So my husband, as you know, requested a grandpa sweater from me. So I just want to insert a clip of like angels singing right now because he runs really hot and so he does not wear coats or knitwear but in the winter he has this sweater that he likes to wear that breathes pretty well. <clears throat> so he asked if I could make him a sweater and I was like oh my gosh yes I would love to but he's extremely picky so it's got to be what he wants exactly. Um, color wise, fabric wise, it has to be knit. There's no way he wear a crochet sweater. So the pattern that we settled on is the Gramps cardigan, which is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. That's what it looks like on the small version. It goes all the way up to what size? To a 59.5 inch bust. So yeah, so 60, it basically goes up to a 60 inch bust and it can be, that's not including ease, I don't think. So if you would want ease, I, it's meant to be worn with about an inch of ease at your widest point. So the size wise, I need to make the medium large size, which is 42 and a half inches around the bust. My gauge is a problem. <laughs> so I, I let me show you the yarns that I ordered. I ordered four different kinds of yarn, one ball of each, because he has to pick out the yarn. I 100% am not going to spend like 100 hours making something that he finds itchy. So I ordered two worsted weight yarns and two DK weight yarns. I thought he was probably going to pick the DK. However, the pattern calls for worsted and I had this secret hope <laughs> that I would be able to do worsted and get gauge. No. So these are the two worsted ones. There's Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Superwash. And he wants it blue, so I ordered various shades of blue. Um, this was a definite no immediately. He touched it and was like, uh, no. And I can see why. It's wool bandies. It's a little bit itchy. So that one is a no. The second one is sw Knit Pick Swish Worsted Weight, which is 100% Superwash Merino in this beautiful, like, royal blue. He didn't really like this one either. I mean, it's pretty soft, but... Um, this was his second pick, which is Knit Pick Swish DK. So this is actually the same color as the wool of the Andes, but it's much softer and of course it's DK so it's thinner. And this was his actual pick. It was the Valley Yarns, which I got from Webbs. Uh, Valley Superwash DK, so it's 100% Superwash Merino. You get 50 grams, 137 yards. And it's this beautiful, beautiful blue. And I do like this blue more than this one. This is kind of like a little more in your face and this is more casual. So it's, it is so, so, so soft. So I know why he picked it. I can't blame him. It's the one I would have picked too. So I did a swatch. 
Yes, my little swatch came out of the washer dryer this morning because I threw it in there because it's super wash. You should be able to, right? Um, I don't know that I'm going to want to throw the entire cardigan in the washer dryer because, of course, being 100% super wash, you can see that it kind of fuzzed up here. It's not horrible, but like here and here, there's just, I would have to like wash it and then glean the whole thing with my gleaner. I do know for a fact the Knit Picks would fuzz up more than this because Knit Picks yarn tends to be fairly fuzzy if you get their merino. But it makes such a beautiful fabric. I originally started on 4.5 millimeter needles and the fabric was way too loose. That's the needle called for in the pattern. So I went down to four millimeter needle and I really, really like the fabric that this creates. It's dense, but it's very light. Like if I, you can see through it, which needs to happen because he runs really hot. So my gauge is way off. And when I say way off, I mean like not a couple stitches. The gauge called for in the pattern is 20 stitches in 28 rows for four inches. I am getting 20, or Let, let's see now I don't remember what I wrote down <laughs> I think I'm getting 20 before I threw it in the washer and dryer I was getting 25 stitches in 33 rows per four inches and I measured it when it came out of the dryer this morning and it was down to 24 stitches in 31 rows I believe per four inches so I'm about three to four rows off gauge which that's okay I can just keep adding rows to meet measurements and I am four to five stitches off gauge so that means <laughs> to make if I made the medium large size if you have more stitches per inch than called for in the gauge your thing is going to end up much smaller so with the pre-washed gauge that I am getting 6.25 stitches per inch to get the stitches to get the amount of inches that I need, which is 42.5, is I would have to cast on either the extra large or the extra, extra large size. And I ran this by one of my knitting friends, <laughs> who is a beautiful real life friend as well. Her name is Marisi. And she helped me. So my math is correct. I'm going to make the extra large size, which based on my stitch count will probably be slightly small. However, I can block it. It's gonna grow a little bit when I block it. And something she reminded me of that I wasn't even thinking of, I was like, okay, so I'm gonna have to make the extra large size and use that stitch count. But she was like, make sure that you make the stitch count for the extra large, but the length measurement for the medium large. And I was like, I totally would have not, not even thought of that at all. And I would have made a cardigan that does not fit. So that is where we are at. My swatch was a success, I think. We've done some math. So I am going to figure out how much yardage I will need, uh, probably a ton, honestly. So on the extra large size here, it says you need 1500 yards of main color. And then it has this contrast band. You need 500-ish, 400 yards of the contrast color. And this has 137 yards per. So that is gonna be quite a yarn order from Webs. Luckily, it has the Webs discount. So when you order that much, you get like 20% off, 25% off or something. But I think this will be, first of all, it's gonna take me forever to knit, probably like 80 to 100 hours. So that's, <laughs> if you break that down per hourly wage, Hour, hourly rate of entertainment. It's actually not that much money, um, but this will be a piece hopefully that will be worn for many, many years to come and be kind of an heirloom piece. So I'm, I'm okay spending a lot of money on it um, because like I said, he's not gonna wear acrylic. It doesn't breathe. He's not gonna wear wool. It's too scratchy. Like it's got to be the perfect thing. So that is where I'm at with that. It's been quite a process. <laughs> that swatch took me like three days. The next thing that I am about to start, but I am just waiting for some yarn to come in is a, a new crochet cardigan. I know, I'm so excited. I haven't been working on a crochet cardigan in quite some time, except for my Tunisian one. And it is the Ariana Lace Cardigan. This is a crochet pattern by Vicky Chan. It is available on Ravelry, and I already have a project page set up for it, even though I haven't really done anything yet. So if you want this pattern, you can go to my Ravelry and then just follow the link in my project page to get to this pattern. It is a paid for pattern. Um, it is. I'm sure worth it because it's got it's got a ton of charts and stuff like that 
um, and it's basically kind of a one size pattern but it has modification instructions to make it whatever size you want because you make it sideways actually so you it would be very very easy to adjust this pattern this was a gift from a viewer of this podcast who sent me this pattern and I instantly when it arrived in my inbox was like oh my gosh I have got to make it it's beautiful and I'm trying to find like there's not too many there's a lot more photos on her this is probably how I wear it there's a lot more photos on her pattern page and there's tons of people who have made this. So I had in my stash three skeins of this Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering in the colorway Klamath, Klamath <laughs> Falls. Oh, how do you say that? It is 80% superwash Highland wool, 20% nylon, 357 yards per 100 grams. This was gifted to me last year and I knew that I wanted to use it for a sweater, but I just didn't know what kind of sweater. So it's been, I love it. It's like this beautiful dark black gray tonal blue. It's amazing. I do not have enough of this. Um, and so what I did is I went on the Knit Picks website and they actually still have this particular colorway. And so I ordered three more skeins and I had a coupon. So it was already 10% off. I think these are normally like $11-ish per skein. So this is like $30 worth of yarn, which honestly, that's okay because it's wool. Like if it was acrylic, I could make a whole sweater for $30. <laughs> um, but this was already in my stash, so it's not breaking my bank to order another three. Um, Knit Picks already had it on sale for 10% off, and then I had a 20% off coupon for Knit Picks and free shipping. So it ended up being a lot less expensive, and I'm really, really excited. That should be coming in the mail next week. This is... I have only bought this entire year maybe one, two, three, like four skeins of yarn total, um, not including what the research skeins <laughs> that I bought for my husband's cardigan. So I was, I'm really, really excited to get started on this. It should, it should come in the mail while I am out of town next week. And oh, I just, this blue is everything. It's gonna be such a worn piece. And as we have discussed previously, I am really, really focusing on trying to make things that I will actually wear. And loose, drapey kind of cardigans, that is what I like to wear. Um, I am not gonna be making a bunch of worsted weight cardigans anymore. I can't handle it. And it, I really do need to focus on cardigans and not sweaters, even though sweaters are gorgeous. I just can't, it's too hot in Florida. There's like two days a year that I would be able to wear an actual sweater. Where you wear cardigans is inside <laughs> when the air conditioner is on. But the minute you go outside, you gotta take it off. And taking off a sweater sometimes can be really awkward. So you like take it off and then like this, you know, you got a t-shirt, it's just a mess. So that is a maker plan that I'm very, very excited about. I think I'm going to go ahead and wind up those three skeins of yarn perhaps today. I do have um, a little bit of incoming things that I wanted to show you. One of them <laughs> is not yarn related. However, I thought maybe some of you would be interested in. I got this on Amazon. It's called the Renew Straw. And it was $15 for six of these and two pods and then the cleaners and stuff. So what this is, is a reusable silicone folding straw. I am a straw person. As you can see, my water cup has a straw and a lid. I cannot be trusted. But in St. Pete where I live, they have kind of banned plastic straws. And I, I'm not trying to be whiny, like I do care about the sea turtles, okay? But my teeth are extremely sensitive to cold and to hot. Um, so I prefer always to drink out of a straw. And anytime I'm in a restaurant where there's ice water served and they, I don't have a straw, like I can barely drink it because it just hurts my teeth. So I got some straws and it folds up. <laughs> and I have already used my straws twice this week. It came in like yesterday, two days ago. I've been to two places where I have whipped this out. One of which was Starbucks because they don't do straws in St. Pete anymore either. And one was a restaurant and it then it just folds back up. It goes into this little pod to keep it clean because you don't want to use your straw floating around your purse. And then you put it, I put it back in my purse. And this is a different straw because as I said, I already used my other straws twice. So I put that one in the wash and I just grabbed another one. And this lives in my purse now and I'm very excited. So if you are a straw person and you have access to Amazon or um, any, I'm pretty sure you can buy these 
from the company direct. It's called Renew Straw, R-E-N-U Straw. And there's the company in Hawaii and they make these. So that was an acquisition that I'm just really excited about because I am I need straws in my life. So I'm excited to have them and also not <laughs> be using plastic. The yarn acquisitions that I have to show you is, I'm really excited about this, however, it's really sad. So there's a beautiful lady named Deb who goes to my church and she is the only person who goes to my church that I know of that knits with a capital K. Um, she, we have done some classes together like that she has gone through and she knit through, the, through them all and was always working with the most beautiful yarn, but she has some health issues and she has arthritis in her hands really, really bad um, and all the rest of her body. So she gets shots once a month to help her help her be able to function. And she has kind of reached the point where she can no longer knit with fingering weight yarn. So she has switched to DK and worsted weight yarn and bulky weight yarn. That's what her hands can handle. And she didn't want her fingering weight yarn to go to waste. So she gave me two bags full, um, which is like, she gave me all of this. This is a lot of yarn. And these bags are from Four, Four Pearls Yarn Shop in Winter Haven, Florida which I think I'm pretty sure, Kalisha, you know Four Pearls, don't you? We didn't go there, did we? We went to knit, we went to knit Long, Longwood and, I know we didn't go there, but I, I know, I feel like you've been to Four Pearls. So she didn't want this yarn to go to waste. She wanted it to be able to be used, so she gave it to me, um, which is just beautiful and so sweet of her. I'm just so heartbroken that she can't use it, and that's the reason that it has made its way into my life. Um, because I, I have arm problems, my right arm, and I'm sure there will be a point in my life at some point where I will not be able to crochet or knit. And the, just the thought of that is like so heartbreaking to me. So I'm going to show you everything that came in. Um, this is all just yarn that was in her stash. Some of it does not have labels and I'm going to send, I'm going to pass along the blessing to some of you guys in the form of prizes for the podcast. Some of this yarn will be that. And I've already separated some yarn out for that. The, and so this entire bag. I believe I will use as prizes and this bag is what I will keep. So this, I don't know what kind of yarn this is. It's a gradient. And it's, I think it's 50 grams, but it's definitely all of her yarn is some kind of wool blend. It definitely feels like wool. So I don't know what that is, but it's beautiful. There are three skeins of this Titus Gothland Bahram U yarn two purple ones and one of this mint green. This is a 70% British wool and 30% alpaca. It's 100% British spun in Yorkshire. And the third skein she actually had balled up, but it is the exact same yarn. So this, I, I'm thinking this may be part of the grand prize at the end of the year for the um, year of the sock. I just think this is so beautiful and I can't, I'll, I'm a little bit sensitive to alpaca, so it will be my pleasure <laughs> to pass this along. There's three of those. There is this, again, I don't know what this is. I I almost wanna say it looks like it has silk in it because it's so sh it's shiny, it's got that sheen. I can't decide if it's self-striping. If it is, it's kind of a micro stripe, but it's a muted rainbow and it's beautiful. This would be wonderful for socks or in a shawl or something like that. Um, I don't think there's a tag in there. <laughs> I'm squishing it and I don't feel any cardboard. So I don't know what this is, but it's some kind of wool blend. Then there is these two. These are both single ply yarns. This one does not have a tag, but it's this amazing mint color. She seems to like mint and it's just gorgeous. And then there's this one, which is a, let's see, hedgehog fibers maybe? Yep, hedgehog fibers. This is a single ply as well in the colorway Hunter. And this tonal green is just amazing. I love it. There's more. <laughs> this is a sweet Georgia yarn. I'm not sure of the colorway on this one, but it's a full ball in this beautiful green. And then finally, there's another hedgehog fiber. And this is not a single ply. Um, in the colorway, 
Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Look at this pink. It's totally blowing out the camera. <laughs> but it really, yeah, that's what it looks like. That's the color. So all of these will make their way into giveaways at some point. So I'm excited to be able to share this beautiful yarn with you guys and not let her her yarn go to waste. Um, let it get some love because she can't love it anymore. And so there's some more. <laughs> and some of this may make its way into giveaways as well. I just couldn't fit any more in that bag. So this is Twisted Owl Fiber Studio. It is a 80% merino nylon called Brothers in Blue. So this is a Longview, Texas yarn. Never heard of them, but it's gorgeous. There is a skein of La Jolla in the colorway Rincon Break. This, this one is definitely staying with me because I am obsessed. <laughs> this colorway is amazing. I love blue and red together. There is a skein of Malabrigo in this beautiful, like autumnal colors. It is the colorway Archangel and it's their Merino sock yarn. And there's a bunch of random <laughs> balls of yarn. So this seems to be an entire ball. I can't tell. Some of these yarn tags are like really wedged in here. This is a 80% Merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon from Lydia yarn. And I don't know that it has a colorway listed. I feel like if I take the tag out, the cake is just gonna collapse. So some of these are gonna have to be rewound. And if I'm keeping it, they're probably gonna have to be soaked. Cause I know they have some dogs and I can tell. <laughs> I'm allergic. There is this. I'm not sure if this is a self striping or a self patterning yarn, who knows? It says 463 yards of pure awesome on the tag, but I can't read what it is. Entanglement. Oh, this is String Theory Fiberworks. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know what the color is, but it's beautiful as well. This one I think is the same, but has no tag. <laughs> it's, it seems like it's String Theory as well. Um, this one and this one, seem to be from the same company, Lydia. So there's a green, like a purple and a green. There's this, I'm not sure if this is 100 grams and this is like 50, they have no tag, but it seems like it's a self-striping of some sort. And then there is these. This yarn looks like La Jolla yarn to me, but I'm not sure, again, it doesn't have a tag. So it's just leftovers from whatever project she did. And then there's a ball of this. Who knows what it is? Something exciting. So um, these are mostly gonna have to be re, at least re-caked because they are very, they have seen the world. <laughs> Perhaps is how I shall say that. And they're, if you were to just start crocheting or knitting off of those balls, it would be some yarn barf going on. But, um, that was really, really sweet of her, and she doesn't watch this podcast or anything, but oh, it just breaks my heart that she's not able to use that yarn anymore, but I'm so thrilled to be able to pass some of that yarn along to you, and, and she just said when she gave it to me, just promise me that the yarn, the yarn will have a life, <laughs> that it won't just sit in a closet somewhere for 20 years and then you give it away and I said I promise I I promise because I know it was really hard for her to admit that she can no longer use that yarn um, so I don't know <laughs> my heart goes out to her and it goes out to you I know we have a lot of viewers of this podcast who are either disabled or have health issues or maybe you are at a point with your fingers where you can no longer use that kind of yarn either and just know that there's nothing really that I can say that will make that better, but hopefully crafting will, can still be a big part of your life, maybe with thicker yarn, maybe with weaving, maybe with cross stitch, I don't know. Um, I'm just really grateful to her, and I hope to use uh, much of her yarn and to send some of her yarn along to you guys as well. So I think that that's mostly everything <laughs> that I have to talk about. I have been rambling for an hour. 
pretty much that's how it goes. I'm always when I sit down like, oh, maybe this episode's gonna be shorter. It's not, it never is. Y'all know I can talk. Next week I will be, I will be leaving on Sunday, so that's two days from now, to go on our biannual planning meeting for the church where I work. So we got that to plan everything out probably through January and do all of that. So that is called staff retreat, but it should really be called <laughs> the biannual planning meeting where we go to a different place and work like 14 hours a day instead of eight. <laughs> But it's a fun time to spend that much time with the people that I work with. I love the people that I work with. So it's always a fun time to do that. I'm going to take probably just socks to knit on because, like I said, we're going to be working the whole time. And I can knit socks and not look, but I can't do anything else and not look. I definitely can't crochet without looking unless it's a granny square. So I don't know how much progress I'll have next time. I am hoping, hoping to have my Ariana cardigan started next time. But we'll see. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. So if you have made it this far, <laughs> thanks for watching. Thanks for coming back again. Thank you so much for the sweet comments you left on my last video. Thank you to the 21 people who have become members of my Patreon community. I have sent out so far two love letters on Sunday morning, which is my weekly letter to the Patreon subscribers um, about mental health. And it's just full of encouragement and hopefully will lift your spirits. I think I've gotten some feedback so far that it has, and I'm excited to release another one on Sunday. It's just a wonderful thing to be able to do. So if you would like to be part of that, there's a link below. Um, and then once everything calms down in the summer, I'm hoping to record an extra episode on a topic that may be of interest to you. All right, I'm gonna stop rambling. <laughs> Until I see you again, happy crafting, be kind to yourself, and I will see you in two weeks. Bye.